In the Dog Cancer Survival Guide, uh, Dr. Dressler, you talk a lot about the role of apoptosis in dog cancer. Um, first of all, uh, easy question, uh, but I'd never heard of apoptosis. What is it and why is it important? Well, it's a really basic process in science, and we've all learned about this, assuming that we took high school science. It, it gets about two paragraphs in your biology textbook. And what it is, is called programmed cell death or programmed cell suicide. And it's the body's way of clearing out deranged cells. And when the cell becomes deranged, when it uh, becomes precancerous or cancerous or other situations, if it's infected or it's injured, or uh, there's a, a variety of different uh, derangements that can happen in a cell to screw it up, the cell is supposed to, in many cases, turn on specific genes that cause it to simply destroy itself. And it's a very quiet process. When we talk about cell suicide, it sounds very violent because suicide is a charged word. But apoptosis is a very machine-like, very deliberate, very healthy and life-giving process. The cell turns on certain little machines, enzymes and whatnot within the cell, chops it up into little pieces, and the little pieces just get recycled into new body components. So that's apoptosis in a nutshell. And there are way, it, there's a ways like to, to cause apoptosis to happen because in the book you, you talk about the fact that cancer cells don't experience apoptosis. That's right. Cancer is one of the hallmarks of cancer that we see widespread in almost all cancers is that they lack apoptosis. They've been able to maneuver around this genetic machinery that's supposed to be turned on. And what that allows them to do is they're deranged, but they don't commit suicide. They just keep on living, keep on growing, and, and can overwhelm the body. And yet, there are ways to turn on this special genetic signal to help those cells commit suicide in a way that's healthy for the body. And as a matter of fact, it's a huge industry right now. The pharmaceutical industry is huge, a huge amount of money invested in cre new and creative ways of turning on apoptosis or programmed cell suicide of cancer cells with the use of drugs and, and, and other therapies. And the interesting thing is that in Mother Nature, there are naturally occurring compounds that have been shown in labs and test tubes and petri dishes and also in living animals. These substances are capable of turning on apoptosis in the body when taken by mouth, when orally available. And that, so, as a matter of fact, oh, sorry, Jim, go ahead. No, I was, I was, I was going to sort of lead you into that. So in addition to the pharmaceutical methods, there are natural ways, which include uh, the, the nutraceutical that you created, which is apocaps. Apocaps, and that was the fundamental mechanism that was used in the engineering of apocaps and it was apocaps is designed specifically to include compounds called apotogens which are special substances found in nature found in plants that have been demonstrated to turn on this healthy process of apoptosis dr edinger what as an oncologist what's your what's your perspective on the role of apoptosis and and getting it started i think it's a another um another mechanism or another treatment modality that we have. Um, I think it's actually very in it, much in its infancy. Um, and I think we're really learning how to incorporate it into the protocols and, you know, to maximize the therapeutic benefit for all of our patients. But I think it's a really exciting um, approach um, and a, another arsenal, you know, another tool we have to combat cancer. Do, do uh, traditional chemotherapy protocols uh, deal with apoptosis or not? They do. I mean, just by some of the mechanisms of cell death with, you know, cancer cells, um, but not really as directly as the apogens that, you know, are being designed now or implemented now. But in other words, when, when, the, when they're developing chemotherapy, they're not specifically looking at using the mechanism of apoptosis to kill the cells, but it's a byproduct or, um, or is that what you... 
I mean, most of the chemotherapy drugs are more into um, direct cell c killing mechanisms by damaging some um, aspect of the cancer cell, um, usually in the mitosis, which is the division. Um, mm -hmm. So they target some um, aspect of that. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just sort of curious about the mechanism of, I mean, because there's what, apoptosis, there's mitosis, and what's another way of killing cells? Yeah, yeah, there's, there, there's a couple of thrusts of the therapy, the targets. So you've got cell division, and then you've got cell death. And that's the gas pedal and the brake pedal. And the emphasis traditionally in traditional chemotherapy has been on eliminating the cell division. So it's, it's a, and, and, and but the problem that we're getting into with this though is that chemotherapy agents actually in many cases will induce apoptosis. They're actually, they actually are apoptogens. And the, the reason why this is sometimes difficult to answer when we're talking about traditional chemotherapy is that the truth of it is, is that we have a few different explanations for why these chemo agents work, but it, there actually is more going on than we really know about. The mechanism by which the chemo agents work, you know, is fairly well described in one particular aspect, but then the more that you, you look at it, the more you realize, hey, wait, this thing is actually, you know, increasing mitochondrial release of cytochrome B, and it is increasing, you know, free radical concentrations in the cancer cell. It's not, it's not only, you know, uh, f paralyzing the, the mitotic spindle or whatever. So we talk about the chemo agents as if they do blankety blank, but when you really start to look at how they work, we find that the situation is much more complex. But the thrust of the um, the way that the chemotherapy agents have been designed is through cytotoxicity most of the time, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but as it turns out, there is overlap also. And in... cytotoxicity is poisoning, cancer, is poisoning cells. It's just um, direct cell death. Yeah. I mean, toxic okay. to the cells is really Toxic to the cells. Yeah. And when you contrast that with an approach like, like apocaps, which is... Not, are you are you poisoning the cells or no? You're not, right? The it's 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 a different process of cell death. It's it's one that's characterized by a very specific uh, metabolic pathway where there's a certain sequence of events that involve the DNA and involve caspases and two, actually two different paths, one of them that, that involves caspases and one of them that doesn't. And the end result is a particular cellular change that can be observed under a microscope that has a certain characteristic look to it. And traditional chemotherapy has not been oriented towards amplifying that specifically. It just is involved in, okay, we're gonna kill these cancer cells. We didn't really care how we're doing it. So it's a more of a sort of a shotgun approach. Cytotoxicity is just cell death, and we'll kill as many cancer cells as we can before we hurt the body. The end. So we're look, we're looking at a more targeted strategy in capitalizing on a specific cancer cell death mechanism. Great, Dr. Dressler, Dr. Ettinger. Thank you. There's much more information on apoptosis and the role it has in dog cancer in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you.